talking with uh, Alex Kersmarkers, uh, President and CEO of Volvo North America, uh, who, the company that has very big news this week. Uh, how are you, Lex? Good, and we are actually, thank you, we are, we are, we are excited about the announcement of, uh, of our new factory in South Carolina. Yeah, very big, uh, very important uh, announcement because, I mean, uh, this means that uh, Volvo is uh, obviously very committed to this market and that is going to allow the, the company to really grow in the near future, right? Yes, we uh, Volvo has a long history in the U.S. We are celebrating our six, 60th anniversary this year. And a, f a commitment of building a factory is not something you do for 10 or 15 years. So for us, this is a very clear signal to our customers and to the market in the United States that we are committed for at least another 60 years. That's great. Uh, and uh, why South Carolina? I guess I, I know the, the, the answer, but our audience will be interested to know why uh, this area in particular for Volvo uh, to build cars here in the U.S.? Now, if you build a factory, and if you build a factory for international sales, not only for national sales, you need to have a very good infrastructure. You need to be close to the water because, I mean, ships are, are an important part of, of our transport mix. So that was potentially one of the main uh, ingredients of taking a decision, accessibility to the sea. Yeah. And so uh, you mentioned the cars will be built for sale here in, the, I guess, nor the whole North American market, but also to export to what regions? Because you already have, uh, I believe, two plants in Europe and two in China, right? Uh, yes. And, and how we are going to do it exactly, we are still under, uh, that, that still work in, in construction. But, uh, you know, we can, we can easily assume that those cars will be sent all over the world. Okay, so can you tell us uh, what's the status of Volvo? Because Volvo has gone through a lot of changes in the past almost a decade now, right? Because it used to be owned by Bo by Ford, and uh, now it's owned, I, I understand, by a Chinese consortium. Yes, and we are still operating as a, as a very independent company. And during the past four years, we have been working on the revitalization of Volvo. We have been working on our new products. We have recently launched our new, very fuel-efficient drive V engines. And we are now in the middle of the launch of our new seven-seater SUV called the XC90. And in the next four to five years, we will roll out 14 new products, which that will, I think, we will have, we, will, we, we can show that um, Volvo is back in the United States. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, around the whole world, as, as, as we mentioned, I'm a, a true global company. And even though you have uh, Chinese investors, I mean, you're like still a Swedish company. And I guess that's a similar case that what happened with Jaguar Land Rover that are owned by Tata from India, but like truly a, a British company. It's the same case with Volvo, right? I, I can only confirm that we are a Swedish company and we will remain a Swedish company well-known for very solid and safe cars. Yeah, uh, so um, you mentioned the, the new models that are coming up. The most immediate is the XC90, right? Like a new uh, SUV. Can you tell us a little bit about it, please? Because, I mean, it's completely new from the ground, so new technology in every sense. Yeah, that's, that's what is uh, the most remarkable thing, because we the, the XC90 is built on a total new platform fulfilling the latest requirements in respect of safety and, 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 and weight. Uh, it's a totally new build-up SUV, again, like the previous XC90, with, uh, with very good seven-seat capacity. We will, uh, of course, I think we are obliged to our safety image. It will have the latest technology in respect of safety, and this time we have spent extra attention on the interior where we launch a very user-friendly, uh, intuitive infotainment system, which clearly shows the way forward, how it's going to be in the future. I think we are groundbreaking in that respect. So we believe that with the XC90, we, have, we will offer an extremely competitive package in respect of uh, SUVs. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, like, the, you, you touched on the main points that uh, everybody has with Volvo design, 
and safety and technology and uh, actually, actually Volvo has been uh, developing some amazing technology in terms of safety not only within the cabin but also like looking out of the car right with like uh, infrared cameras and that kind of technology now we uh, Volvo has a vision but and, and, and we started actually a long time with that vision and that vision says that in by 2020 nobody should be killed or heavily injured in a Volvo car and of course that requires a lot of technology and step by step we start to build in that technology into our cars we know that 70 to 80 percent of all accidents is caused by human failure and step by step we are taking out we are trying to take out that human failure aspect and there where the car can help we think it it benefits everybody yeah it's pretty amazing when you mention 2020 because i mean it's five years away but in the automotive industry it's almost like no time because right now you're already working with that technology right yeah absolutely and it, it's it's necessary because as you as you rightly say five years is very close and it's of course all the passive and active safety systems it's the inter it's the it's the intuitiveness of our systems inside the car and in the long run also autonomous drive will be a very important ingredient to reach our vision yeah and in that sense i mean are you already uh, i'm sure testing that that autonomous driving a topic that everybody is talking about nowadays uh so what's uh, i mean I, I know you cannot tell me a lot but like what's what's the uh, Volvo stand on that? No, the, 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 the first step is of course start to build in the available technology in cars, what we call traffic jam assist, that you can just follow the car ahead of you and the car brakes automatically. But what we will do by 2017 in, in our home country and our home city in Sweden and, and in Göteborg is that we will launch a car uh, which is called Drive Me a program which is called Drive Me, where we allow 100 customers to drive around in a in a certain environment outside, just in a normal city, uh, where we can start to gain experience. And even more important, the customers can start to gain experience with autonomous drive. And I think we can easily claim that we are the first brand who is going to do that. What? And of course, that's not an easy step, but... Uh, we are confident that we will be uh, we will be able to do that step. That's pretty amazing. Uh, Two thousand seven. Exactly, it, uh, and it's it's sorry, and it, it's not only about the technology because you can probably put a lot of technology in a car. It's also that customers need to start to feel comfortable using that technology. Yeah, that was my next point because even now, I mean that, that, that some cars already have like pre-advanced systems in terms of like if you you like the, the intelligent cruise control that you let the car go and like as you were mentioning calculate the distance and speed of the car ahead of you and the car actually brakes on its own. A lot of people are not comfortable with that and they're like, I mean, you you really have to to experience it to really trust those systems. And that's what we are going to try to do with, uh, with the Drive Me project. But also, and as you, you, you rightly said it yourself, we have adaptive cruise control where that is, those steps are necessary to make the consumer aware of how it works and to get more comfortable with these high tech systems supporting them. Because at the end, at the end, these are supporting systems. We we don't build in these systems to allow the, the customer to read the newspaper. Not yet. It yeah. will be beyond 2020. Uh, at least that's how we see it when we reach into that stage. All the systems are here to build to take over from the driver in case something goes wrong. And normally technology is faster than we can react. That's yeah. At least our and also, it also faster than uh, legislature and infrastructure, which uh, it will, you know we, we we all know can take a long a long part, especially when you deal with uh, government and like legislation. Like how we're gonna be able to adapt that technology into day to day life, right? And 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 that's why the pilot we run in Sweden, we do this together with the local authorities. We do it together with those building the roads, because at the end. 
It's the legislation, as you said, it's the infrastructure, and it's us delivering the cars. It's this triangle which makes it to a success. And that's why involve, we involve all parties in Sweden on this journey. That's amazing. Well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, we're talking with uh, Lex uh, Kresenmacher, uh, President and CEO of Volvo Cars North America with the announcement of the new plant in uh, South Carolina. And as we just heard, pretty cool stuff and like really, really exciting stuff coming in from Volvo in the next uh, months and a few years. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great day. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.